And we should be recording. Excellent. All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, today's, or rather this month's webinar is on understanding data ops, uh, how to solve the challenge of data contextualization in IoT. And we have a very special webinar today. Uh, we are actually joined by a guest speaker, uh, John Harrington from HiByte. Um, HiByte is a, a newer company uh, that deals a lot in the data ops space and is actually a really um, kind of good solution to go along with Kepware. And they actually just recently became a technology partner with Kepware. Um, so we are going to dive into that and uh, a little bit of a different format this time. Uh, typically in the past, we kind of do a, you know, it's the, it's the Kyle show for a while and we talk more around a, a PowerPoint and it's very structured, but we're, we're going to try to keep this as close to almost like a podcast as much as we can, more of a discussion around things. Um, and then eventually ending with John giving an overview of, uh, of HiByte. So just some really quick, some logistics here. Um, you may have seen this at the beginning, uh, but you know, this webinar is being recorded. Um, so you can you know refer to this at a later date if you want to. Um, additionally, we will be sending out the slides to you all. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, um, there is a, you know, feel free to use the chat box or the Q&A box uh, within Zoom. We do have someone monitoring that. Um, and with that, I guess, I guess we'll start with introductions. Um, John, do you actually wanna, you wanna go first here? Uh, sure, my name is John Harrington. I am uh, the Chief Business Officer at HiBite and one of the co-founders. Um, I guess I'll Excellent. stop there. There, there it is. We're going to spend, spend a lot of time talking about some of my background and uh, and um, what I'm doing now over the next uh, next half an hour to an hour. So perfect. Excellent. Thanks for inviting uh, me. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to glad to have you. Uh, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Kyle Carew. I'm the partner enablement engineer for our channel team. Um, so fancier title for applications engineer, uh, but I do more webinars, more um, you know, architecture reviews, um, technical documentations, sort of things like that um, to help with you folks, our, our system integrator uh, community. So um, you may have been on a few of these webinars before, maybe see me at trade shows, but if not, uh, nice to meet you. Um, and again, really quick, we, I kind of mentioned this at the beginning, but we're gonna try to do more discussion, a little bit more back and forth and less powerpoint -y type of uh, type of slides, but should be a good one. Um, so I guess right away, let's just start with um, John, if you want to give us a little bit of a, an overview uh, of HiByte and what, and what you guys do. Right, yeah, thanks Kyle. And thank you all for attending. Uh, I look forward to uh, having this dialogue and continuing the dialogue after, after this session as well. Um, so HiByte, uh, Highbytes on a mission to make industrial automation data, data from the factory floor, easy to use and simple to manage. And we're going to talk about our solution, the Highbyte Intelligence Hub, over the course of, of this discussion. But the idea is um, industrial data was put in place for automation purposes. How do we leverage that throughout the corporation as well as your extended corporation to get the most value out of it. HiBite as a company was formed about two years ago um, and we launched our first product, the HiBite Intelligence Hub uh, in January. It was founded, HiBite was founded by myself, uh, Tony Payne and Tori Penrod Canberra. Um, those names may be familiar with some of you. The three of us had worked at Kepware for many years. Um, Tony had worked there for about 20 years. Uh, Tony was the previous CEO of Kepware um, prior to it getting acquired by PTC. And Tori uh, led the marketing team and I was on the product management team. So uh, lots of understanding in Kepware and having worked with many of the people on this call before. And we look forward to our continued relationship with, with Kepware and PTC, as well as all of you. Um, so the Highmind Intelligence Hub is designed really to accelerate IT projects. We recognize that a lot of IT projects that were trying to leverage industrial data were struggling, they weren't scaling, they weren't rolling out as fast as they had hoped. And so we said, we need to drive manufacturing performance. Um, we, we know industrial data, having worked at Kepware and worked with all of you for many years, 
we think there are some new challenges and that, that we want to go solve them. The solution is designed specifically for the OT world. So not, um, not that the IT team can't use it, but we felt that the OT team really needs a solution where they can um, build out this, uh, their, their, their ability to standardize and contextualize data and um, in, in a scale that is common within the industrial environment. So, so that's really what Highlight is, where a software solution runs at the edge, run by the, I, the uh, operations technology team to deliver data to their IT projects. Excellent. Thanks, John. Yeah, and, and it's, it's um, you know, having spent a little bit of time with the, with the product from what you show me, um, obviously, we'll, we'll dive into this a little bit later, but um, it, it's, it's really fascinating to me to see sort of IT fundamentals or IT philosophies slowly starting to make their way over to the OT folks. Um, you know, for me personally, when I, when I started my career, it was more like, hey, Ethernet was like the new thing in the OT world. And, and, that, and that was super interesting to watch to see these very smart controls engineers like not, you know, have an idea around IP addresses. I, I might be simplifying that a little bit, but, but you know what I'm saying. Um, so with that in mind, um, you know, maybe the first discussion topic here, I, I think that would make sense is, you know, I, I think with both of our backgrounds very much in the OT space and being, you know, in our careers around like seeing this digital transformation come in, seeing IT technology lead into OT technology, from your perspective, what do you think has changed in terms of some of the data requirements um, that are now being required in these digital transformation projects? Um, I think a lot's changed. I think a lot's changing every day. The complexity of where data is going and how we manage and, and maintain those connections over time has gotten significantly harder. Um, the factory floor is changing much more frequently than it used to. Products are changing, process improvements are changing, and at the same time, the complexity of who wants to collect data is changing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's dig in. Definitely, yeah. So I, I guess from a, <clears throat> excuse me, from a, from a Kepler perspective, um, and some of the folks on this uh, webinar probably have seen this slide before. It's definitely one of my uh, one of my go tos and one of my favorites. But one of the big things that we have seen in terms of like the data requirements is more around the uh, sort of like the, the different protocols and the protocol translations. But beyond that, like how the overall architecture has changed. So in the past, you know, folks have been very much aligned with that ISA ninety five model that you see on the left there, where it's very much Hey, you've got these, you know, level zero assets like these sensors or what have you, feeding up into the PLCs, from the PLCs to a SCADA system, and then maybe from there to an MES, and then maybe eventually to some sort of ERP type system. And you know, at the time that was that was great. It worked with the technology that was available, but the downfall was that in order to get from like a layer zero to a layer four, it had to go through each one of those different steps, and then that data had to be transformed a bunch of different times. So by the time you got to the top layer, that data looked dramatically different uh, from when it started, which potentially could be a bad thing, right? There, anytime you do any sort of translation, you know, things might be lost, whether it's context or, or whatever. So what we've seen is more around this sort of, you know, we call it like an elevator approach where there's some sort of middleware uh, you know, in this case, we hope you're using Kepware, but, but in this case, some sort of middleware in between your PLCs and the rest of your regular applications. And the idea is that middleware can ingest uh, data from your factory floor, whether that's through Modbus or Ethernet or, you know, w whatever industrial protocol you have, but then from there, transform that into things like MQTT, OPC UA, REST protocols, um, you know, connect to ODBC uh, databases, things like that but it's all from one central location. So the idea is that you can send that data to different places um, without going through each uh, one of those steps to get there, to get to your uh, final end solution there. So, is that, so I'm assuming from a high byte standpoint, that's, you know, that's kind of what you're talking about. Yeah, so I, I, think, I, think, I think you're right. I think um, you know, that each step adds latency, each step adds cost, each step adds um, maintenance. And so as you move it up, you need to, the, the paradigm is shifting. In fact, 
we, you know, if we, if we look at, at, at these diagrams here, which LNS Research has produced, and they've been using their research in, um, company in our industry, they've taken it a step further and said, it's not just about getting it into one system. Now, um, whereas you would have a MES system and you may have a, an ERP system, now we're seeing even more systems. And so they actually have taken that, um, you know, the, the IoT concept one step further and said, well, it's really about industrial transformation. A lot of our legacy applications are being um, transformed as well. And they're, they're able now to collect data, get real-time data, um, and, and utilize that. So I'm talking about things like your CMMS system or your quality management system. Right, so if all those systems do, it's not even just a move the data to one, it's a move the data to many. And, and, and what are the challenges in the architectures that we have to recognize and work with if we're moving the data to many? And I think it's, it's fascinating. You know, Kepware for many years has been kind of an abstraction from the SCADA or the MES layer. But now if you look at the green bar and the diagram on the left, they don't just have connectivity there, they've got data model too. Mm -hmm. Because they recognize that if you're pushing the data into multiple um, applications or multiple data storage mechanisms, you don't want to model it once. You want to be able to model, or you don't want to model it for each system, you want to model it once. So, you know, how do we pull out certain functions that maybe used to be done in, in, a syst in each system and pull it down into this, this abstraction layer. Um, if you look at the diagram on the right, very similarly, they've got that data um, conditioning and contextualization as a separate block. It's no longer integrated into, when they had an IoT diagram, it would be integrated in with the, with the applications. Now they've pulled it out into a separate block sitting on top of connectivity, but separate from the development tools in the application layer, because they see it as, as a separate challenge that really needs to be abstracted. So, um, you know, we, we, are, we are very much in line with these theories of um, data needs to be managed and needs to be prepared effectively for all these systems. Interesting. So it, it sounds like, you know, it's reflective of the, that true IoT sense of like, hey, let's just connect everything together and we'll, we'll send it up somewhere and we'll do Definitely. some neat reporting. But I, but I think what gets lost is that there's this idea of, hey, once I connect, you know, uh, a server, like an OPC server or something to the cloud, like that's it. But I'm not, real, right, right. But that, but that's not, that's obviously not the case. Like, Right. It's most of it is done. You you do have the data there, but there's some sort of layer of contextualization that that's sort of missing. And right, what I kind of well, see. And I think one thing that happened there was um, <clears throat> the data scientist that started looking at that data that got that showed up looked at the data and said, "I don't understand. I'm a data scientist. I don't understand a Modbus register." So, mm. you know, that's where the challenge lies. So let's jump in here. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so so I kind of view that as like if we look at tr a traditional SCADA setup here, right? I almost see that as and stay with me here, but like using SCADA is almost like its own uh, contextualization platform. So what I mean by that is, hey, you've got a bunch of PLCs that you're sending to your data server part of your SCADA system. Um, maybe it's reading Modbus, maybe it's reading uh, you know Rockwell tags or Siemens tags or or what have you, and you know, maybe that data store, uh, data server is doing some sort of contextualization in the sense that it's, <clears throat> you know, instead of the forty thousand one Modbus register, maybe it's temp one in the in the SCADA system. But regardless, you're then taking all of those different individual tags and then assigning them to something um, in that SCADA system. In this case, you know, um, the example here is we're assigning a bunch of these different tags, you know, the valve open, tank level, high alarm, low alarm, tank temp, all these things to one, you know, visual object, one tank. And that's great because back in the day, like before IoT, that was it. Like that's all you needed to know. SCADA was a very closed system in itself. But with an IoT opening up, I, I feel like the ideal uh, solution would be, hey, let's take that, that, uh, 
contextualization of, hey, I have one tank with all these tags and let me just send that model of a tank up to the cloud. That's what you want because now you have that OT uh, insight into an IT world. Exactly. In fact, if you look at this, you know, just the fact that there's a tank there, there's no tank defined in the PLC if there's 40,001, 40,005, you know, whatever it is um, for the data point. Mm -hmm. But you've drawn a tank and then put a, a data tag on the fill level. And now all of a sudden, when you look at it, you, you, you as a human understand the context of that and you understand where that fill level, which tank it's on. Um, how that tank is aligned with the other tanks in the system. And all that knowledge is not stored in the data structures of the SCADA system. It's generally just stored in that screen. Some of it does get pushed into the data structures, but a lot of it is in that screen. And so you're right that the people in the, in work, you know, when they receive the data in the cloud, they'd love to see all that, not see it contextually, but see it in the data because they're going to run analytics on it. But that becomes very hard. Mm -hmm. And then if I've got five other systems, I don't want to create, contextualize all that data each time. Definitely. So ideally then, um, you know, you would have sort of a system architecture that would look similar to this. And could you, could you walk us through this? Yeah. So, so the idea is um, here we've got Cap server collecting the data just like it does today. Um, and then the Hybrid Intelligence Hub can consume the data over OPC UA from, from Kepware, and it can model and, and build up the flows of the data. And so that, that's where we're contextualizing and modeling the data, structuring it, and then we send it out over, over MQTT so that it then goes up to the cloud. And that way, when it lands in the cloud, it's very structured, it's very standardized and contextualized. Excellent. Um, so one of the big things, um, you know, as, as we were talking, um, preparing for this webinar, I, I came across on your website, uh, a really awesome white paper, um, that I believe you wrote, it was all about data ops and this whole, um, or maybe co-authored, uh, but this whole idea of like data ops and, you know, we, you kind of touched upon that earlier. Could yep. you just overtly from a high level overview, like what, what exactly is data ops and what, what do you mean by that when you say that? Yeah. So, um, a lot of us on the on the automation side or in the OT world are, are less familiar with data ops, but it's a term that's being utilized in the IT world. In fact, I found this great quote from IBM. It's on their on their website. Uh, they've got a whole section on data ops, and they say data ops is is the orchestration of people, process, and technology to deliver trusted, business ready data to applications, people, operations, you name it. But the idea is it's the delivery and the business ready data. And how do we turn industrial data into, how do we deliver it and how do we make it business ready? And that's, you know, if I go back to the, uh, the diagram here and, and the, the LNS research diagram, I think of data ops as being what's underneath that red line. So it's the conditioning, the contextualization and the connectivity piece. And then what's above the red line is the IoT platform and the IoT applications and the analytics and all of those systems. So data ops is more of a, it's an infrastructure. It's a, it's a middleware that's preparing and delivering data, but you're doing it at scale. And we put industrial on the front of it because industrial data is different. It's not it's not the same as hooking up two different transaction systems, the ERP system to the marketing system or combining the ERP with the marketing system and, and pushing the data into a data lake. Um, with industrial data, you've got a factory full of equipment and every single piece often has its own uh, data model. So it's just got some different challenges than your typical IT data ops. And that's why we define it as industrial data ops as solutions that are really focused on connectivity, conditioning, contextualization, and then delivery. Awesome. And yeah. And it, we see, that's where we see the Kepware partnership being so powerful is that, you know, you guys do connectivity better than anyone in the world. And we're focused on the conditioning, contextualization, and delivery. Awesome. Yeah. Th thank you for that. We, we definitely, uh, <laughs> 
that's big words. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, yeah, and, it, and it's interesting. And you know, you think back of I, I would think you could almost make the argument that you know before IoT, before all of that cloud stuff, like when it was just SCADA systems and you had a bunch of different protocols, like you could almost make the argument that that in itself is industrial data ops and that Kepware solved that. But you know, as we've been talking about with digital transformation and in your favorite buzzword, like it's expand into a bunch of other different things where, hey, there's now a lot more that goes into it than just getting this, um, you know, old PLC five to talk to my control logics or, or what have yeah. you. Yeah, it, it used to be a very much a, a very part time job and, and kind of a, a component of, of a broader discipline. And now we're seeing it as its own discipline. They talk there about people. Well, here you can see, um, you know, when we start talking with, with companies, um, certainly some of the people involved in this are your controls and process engineers or manufacturing systems engineers that we've been talking to for many years that Kepware works with. But we also hear the titles of data engineer or integration engineer or systems architect. And all of a sudden you realize that they see this as a much bigger challenge and a much bigger problem. Um, you know, when we, when we think about the responsibilities, the processes that people need to achieve, um, you know, it's, it's certainly integrating systems, it's architecting systems, it's information modeling and, and, and people with a really good understanding of what, what are the information models that we need to create and what are the tools and techniques related to them. And you really have to understand the automation world. You need to auto understand your automation infrastructure, otherwise you can never, you can't do this, but you also need to understand where the data is going. And that could be working closely with data scientists or, or your IT um, uh, friends, mm -hmm. folks within the company. Um, but you, you certainly need to know the target as well as the source of the data. And, you know, security is the final key piece there. It's, mm -hmm. You need to secure the data and, and the architecture. So definitely. Yeah. And, and I mean, just, that in itself, um, you know, the need for that, for some sort of solution that is, allows OT folks to have and create that um, data contextualization before it gets sent off becomes so much more important because there is so much more to digital transformation than just, you know, connecting two things together. There's a lot more as, as you peel back that onion. Right, um, and, and the contextualization, you need to know the data because that's the context. Knowing that, that knowledge that you build up of the data, of the factory, of the equipment, mm -hmm. is the context that you instill in that data. And you know, we've, we've seen this, we've seen the majority of the, the, the companies that are most advanced in this are the companies that have merged the IT and OT departments, or at least have, have a strong relationship and a strong bond between the two where they're working together and maybe you even have a, a chief digital officer who's working with them to try to um, push this this methodology of it's not IT against OT it's IT and OT working together and this is one of the, the new disciplines of the new world that that didn't really exist it was a, it was um, less important in the old world, it's becoming much more important in the new world, and we see people specifically focused on it. Definitely. So I, I want to focus in on something here. Um, so we brought up the terms contextualization, normalization, standardization. Um, we definitely throw that around a lot, and I feel like we hear this a lot more <laughs> in the IoT space, but there's obviously a lot of nuance to each of those, and it's going to depend on who you're talking to, what's the application. So from a from a high bike perspective, like how do you, you know, what do these terms uh, sort of mean to you guys? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's important. Um, you know, the, the, the diagram on the left is kind of the, the typical OPC browser with a series of tags and it's really focused on your automation equipment, right? So you may have a machine controller, you may have a PLC, you may have other devices, you may even have some smart sensors in there. Um, the idea with the diagram on the right is, okay, this is an information object. This is an information object that we're building up, that we've sent out. Um, and number one, so, you know, some of the terms. Um, standardization is about, um, I talk to companies and they say, you know, we started looking 
we moved all of our data out of Kepware and we moved it up to Azure and we started looking and we've got 10 different injection molding machines. And every single one of them has their own data model because some of them had different options and some of them were bought from different companies over the years and some of them are just older than others. And so when you're ingesting that and you're up working um, as a data scientist, that's confusing and that's hard to work with. But if we can standardize the model, which is essentially what we're talking about here, creating a model for an injection molding machine and then applying it to each one, then we've standardized the data, we've identified the attributes that are common among all of them that we wanna work with. And, and, and that's, that's how we define standardization. When we talk about aggregation, what we're talking about is um, some data may be on a PLC, some data may be on a machine controller, some data may be on a smart sensor that you installed. How do we aggregate that together? The data scientist doesn't need to know or the quality application doesn't need to know that it came from three different devices. Um, what they want to know is give me the data that I need. So we aggregate data across multiple devices. Sometimes we need to transform the data. So oftentimes on a PLC, where you know the state is captured in a numeric uh, format so mm -hmm. one is running and zero is error and there's lots of ranges there five is 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 standby um, that makes a lot of sense to the operation engineer that doesn't make any sense to the uh, person looking at the data from the quality system or from the asset maintenance system so how do we transform that data so that it's understandable and usable by the target system. Sometimes those target systems expect different values, so we need to be able to make those transformations. When we talk about normalization, what we're talking about is units of measure. Um, some sensors are just measuring between zero and 100, and, and then you know, they give you what is the temperature range or what is the pressure range that this measures, but the values are between zero and 100 or zero and 1,000, zero and 10,000. And you need to do that translation. Um, other times you've got um, you know, different units of measure like a kilopascal to a PSI, or you've got temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Um, you've got hundred, hundreds to uh, single digits or hundreds of thousands to single digits or whatever. You often have to do those translations with industrial data because from one device to the next, it's going to be different. From one sensor mm -hmm. to the next, it's different. And finally, when we talk about contextualization, to us that means um, adding data that, that, that isn't in, that, that is almost like metadata to the data. So could be actual values like, well, what's the location or or um, what work cell is this on? But it also could be human readable attribute names. So just that is really adding context to the data, making it understandable by the people. So mm -hmm. that's how we think about data, um, those different terms. And certainly you're right. A lot of people use these terms and, and have their own definitions for them. But. Definitely. Yeah, thank you for that overview. And you know what's always super fascinating to me is, is we, talk with customers who are diving into IOT projects or, or digital transformation projects is that this whole concept like hasn't really changed through the SCADA days. It's just that whole idea is nuanced just, just a little bit. And at the end of the day, I, I feel that I always have to remind myself is when we're looking at any sort of digital transformation project and, and um, you know, connectivity is involved, visualizations involved, what, whatever is involved, like the, at the end of the day, what we want to do is take this data that, doesn't necessarily make sense to you know any one person but let's take that transform it contextualize it into a way that allows us as humans to have actionable items from that data that that's the whole point of the entire digital transformation iot whatever is hey how do i take this raw data and create some sort of action behind it right right because so. ultimately the justification for that system or for that person is to improve your manufacturing process. So, so ultimately it's how do I improve my manufacturing process by leveraging this system to make better decisions, make better decisions faster or on a greater scale. I mean, mm -hmm. in the old days uh, or many, a number of years ago and still in many companies today, 
if quality needs to understand what's going on with a piece of machinery, they'll go down onto the factory floor and they'll stand there and they'll count the parts and they'll look at the defects. But that doesn't scale. If you've got a hundred pieces of machinery, you want to be able to collect the data and then look at all hundred at once and be able to analyze what's going on. What are the environmental impacts? What are the, the upstream impacts that are causing these defects or these challenges? So, so it's Definitely. taking processes that have been done for, for a long time, like you said, but it's, it's, it's scaling them up across the entire factory or, or the entire company. Definitely. Definitely. Um, okay. Awesome. So, you know, I think at this point, um, you know, we, we talked a lot around just general um, industry topics. Um, I think I'm going to hand it over to you, which is really just going to be me <laughs> advancing these slides as best I can. Um, yeah. But we'd love to, um, you know, folks on this call are, are Kepware partners. They know Kepware in and out. Um, you know, we thought that this would be a great tool for them to utilize in their IoT projects. Um, so if you wouldn't mind just giving us a, a little more of a deeper dive into um, the high by intelligence hub, that'd be, that'd be awesome. Yeah, happy to, and, and uh, happy to explain a little bit more about high by, but I will also say, um, I, we're also happy to engage with anyone on the call who's interested in learning more um, today. We've got a few minutes, so I'll talk about it, but there's a lot more to, to see, and, uh, and I've got a few screenshots, but we can do live demos and explain it much better. There's also a lot of information on the internet and on, on YouTube um, about HiBite and, and how the Intelligence Hub works. So the, the quick overview of the HiBite Intelligence Hub. Um, we've already seen this diagram. Essentially, it is a data hub. It ingests data over OPC UA. It brings that data in. It, 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 at the center of the intelligence hub is a modeling engine. That allows you to create these models, asset models. You can create process models or you can create product models, depending on how you're going to be using the data. You can actually even create system models. It's really up to you. It's up to where the data is going and how you want to work with it. The modeling environment is where you do that standardization, normalization, contextualization of data. The Intelligence Hub was designed specifically for the OT team to add the context that they know about that data into the data before it gets moved off to the various applications that need it. Uh, because it's designed for the OT team, you know, we thought it was important to be a codeless solution. It's something that you put in, it's an application, you're managing the systems, it's, it's less like uh, Microsoft Azure, which is more of a development environment. Um, it runs on the on-premises, it's designed to run potentially at the edge. Um, the idea is it can run on an IoT gateway, it can run right beside Kepser, Kepware. Um, not a problem, and the two communicate, and then it pushes the data out. Um, one of the key things about, about the Intelligence Hub is not only does it model the data, but it also manages the flow out of the data. So instead of being a server that serves data, we push data out over MQTT so that you can define the data specific for a target application and then push the data to that application. And you know, by having it as that flexible uh, system, you can manage it and maintain it over time. So here are a few screenshots. I didn't want to have a, a, a full demo, but um, we're happy to do that, or there's, there's videos online. But here are a few screenshots on the left. Um, we create connections, just like that last diagram. And when you're creating your connections and you're identifying the data points within KEP server that you want to work with, we can browse right into that database. So, so we're using OPC UA client and we're connecting in and we're browsing the, the Kepware um, uh, namespace, identifying the data tags that you want to bring in and ingesting them in. We then run those data points through a modeling system and you can design uh, the models however you need them. So they can be as, as simple as just a simple uh, thermostat where you're, you've got a few data points that you're collecting on it, or they can be as complex as, as an entire line with multiple pieces of machinery and multiple subsystems of that machinery. 
really it's up to you, the user. You can, you can define some models and some models of those as much as you need and want, uh, want to manage. Um, and then finally, once you've modeled the data up and you've created an instance for each, each actual piece of machinery or each, um, each set of data that you want to send out, each information model, then you create a flow and the flow allows you to send that data out to the target system. And these flows can be as simple as just every second I want to send data or they can be much more complex where you say, well, I only want to, I want to alert this, send an alert to this system um, with this data packet because my temperature went over um, 120 degrees or I want to only turn on my data logging for this piece of machinery when the machine is operating. I don't want to be logging data that, that means nothing when the machine is in standby or when the machine isn't even on. So, um, like I said, we set it up very similar to that last diagram. So, John, I, I guess I have a, have a question for you. So, you mentioned that the ingestion, I guess, where you're you know, consuming data, is it just over OPC UA? Yep. Yep, so we ingest over OPC UA. We really, um, we see our relationship with Kepware as we don't need to uh, create additional device drivers because Kepware is there and Kepware's got a great library of device drivers and we're consuming data over OPC UA into the intelligence hub and then pushing it out over MQTT. Excellent. And one thing I thought that would be interesting um, for you know the folks on this call to see, and we, we've prepared uh, a slide here, um, is looking at you know because you know Kepware has the ability to send data via MQTT, and so does so does Highbyte. And you know with Highbyte, what you're getting is, or the Highbyte Intelligence Hub rather, is you're getting that data modeling aspect to it. And we're not saying one is better than the other. It really depends on the application, but what for me i guess what drove the point home was looking at the actual uh payloads uh between the two um so on the left you're seeing a, a json payload from kepware from our iot gateway plugin um which you know has some contextualization to it if you understand our channel.device.tag sort of nomenclature there, there's some information there but on the right that's the json payload you're getting directly from the high light intelligence hub Exactly. So, um, you know, like you said, in the IoT gateway, you identify a series of tags and you send them out. Um, with with Highbyte, we're ingesting those tags. Very, you know, the same tags, the same values. But what we're doing is we're transforming them and we're adding that context, right? We're adding a lot more into that information model so that when we send it out, um, you can make sense of it. Now, if the operations team the operations technology team is working with this data, they may be happy with the IoT gateway. You know, it's, it's great, it's, it's fast, and, and it's, it's a single architecture. Um, but what we've seen is when you move it outside of the OT space, people need more context. And when they need more context, that's where Highbyte really comes in, providing inf you know, these information objects to be able to build up, you know, build up those models and then send them out and it allows the OT team to not be pulled into as many, uh, as many conference, conference rooms or conference calls now um, to, to answer all the questions about what is the uh, Modbus Ethernet T-Box Tag 8 really mean? Mm -hmm. Now, you know, they look at it and they can understand it. They know exactly where it's coming from. Definitely. Yeah. And, and, you know, tying this back to some of those, those other disciplines that we talked about that have kind of stemmed from this data ops emergence is, Hey, you know, if your company is fortunate enough where they have a, a good solid team of maybe not even data scientists, but it folk who understand the OT language, um, you know, then yeah, sure. Maybe IOT gateway is all you need. Perfect. That, that works for me, but Hey, maybe, you don't have that or you want to do some of the modeling at the OT level, then you can do that too. You know, with most things automations, as I'm sure everyone on this call understands, there's more than one way to do things. Exactly. Uh, and there, and there are pros and cons to both. Yep. Yep. Agreed. Awesome. Um, 
so I guess really quick in, in, in closing here, um, you know, just looking at the two, the two solutions. So Kepware with all of the drivers, all the protocol support, the protocol translation, all that fun stuff, we're getting all of that data from the factory floor and aggregating it into one spot. With the Highbyte Intelligence Hub, you're getting all of that information from the drivers from Kepware, ingesting it via OPC UA, and then doing that data modeling, that data contextualization, and then sending it out to various um, to various other applications. Um, anything you want to add there, John? In closing? No, I think that's that's exactly right. I mean, we don't we don't build out drivers. Um, and, you know, we see ourselves as doing the information modeling and, you know, we, we think that uh, based on the people that we've been talking to, that provides, that provides value when you're moving the data up, up to the IT world. Um, and, and we really enjoy the relationship with Kepware and look, and look to uh, expand on that. Excellent. And I and, uh, want to thank you, John, <clears throat> for joining us. I think this was an, is an awesome discussion. Definitely. I thought it was fun. Um, you know, it was the first time we've done this sort of back and forth. I, I think it's kind of a cool way to, to do these things. Um, so we've had some of the folks at Kepware uh, monitoring the Chang Q&A. Uh, Carolyn, do we, do we have anything in there? Yeah, we do have a couple questions. And this was Excellent. fun. Thanks, John. Um, OK, so first question, does Highbyte support store and forward of data? Should the MQTT link be lost? So today um, we are pushing data to the broker and expect the broker to handle that. Um, however, I will tell you that uh, in our next release, which is due out in September, we are planning on, on having a storm forward capability built in. Okay, great. Um, John, this is another one for you. Can you give us a, uh, a use case for, um, for using Highbyte Intelligence Hub? Yeah. So. So a real simple use case, and, and I kind of mentioned it earlier, is you've got, a you've got a factory and you've got a number of pieces of machinery that are very common or, or that, you have that, are, that you've got multiple of. So maybe it's robots or maybe it's injection molding machines. Either way, um, you've got this machinery, you pull the data through Kepware and you look at the data tags and realize there are different machine controllers on each one, or there are different tag definitions. How do I standardize that in such a way that I can push the data into, take for instance, Microsoft Azure, I can, I can run it into a Power BI trend, and I can very quickly ingest and, and analyze the data. And, and instead of having to handle every unique tag in Azure, now you can standardize that data um, in the OT world, send it off, and then when it lands in Power BI, it's just very easy to uh, ingest it and apply it to, to the uh, trend. So that's probably the, the, the most straightforward example of how you can really quickly get value, standardizing that data from the factory. Sounds good. Um, another question is, is the Highbyte Intelligence Hub like an asset framework? Yeah, so, so that's an interesting question. And some of the um, historians, data historians, have asset framework capabilities. Um, so you can certainly define an asset framework within the Highbyte Intelligence Hub. And so people are used to seeing that. But at the same time, you can also define a product framework. And you can define a process framework, and you can define a system framework. And so, so you, you don't need to stop at assets. You can define a framework how, and, and information models, however you need to structure the data such that people within your company can get the most use out of it. And I will say even people outside of your company. So maybe you want to um, push the data off to a vendor for their IoT system. Um, that, that needs access to that machinery. Now we can, they can tell you what data they need. You can define an information model for that system and then push the data out and you then control the delivery of that data. Okay, and you ready for the last one before we wrap up? Um, I guess probably an important question is, how do people find out more and uh, trial your product? Um, great question. The 
best place to start is highbyte.com. We've got a lot of information up there. We've got blogs and, and product data sheets and white papers, as Kyle said, uh, data ops white paper. Um, there's also YouTube. We've got, we've got our own YouTube channel and um, we've got a lot of videos on there. And then finally, we would love to talk to anyone on the call. We'd love to talk to any, any system integrators. We've already talked to um, a number of system integrators, but we're just trying to get the word out and you know we're real excited about our relationship with Kepware because um, to be honest we've been testing the product with Kepware for a long time now because that's a it's it's a very uh, it's it's an OPC server that a lot of people have a lot of people use so um, the two products work great together and and we're ready to um, to go with it but certainly reach out to us we can show you a demo we it, the demo will include Kepware. It's got Kepware in it, it's got Highbyte in it. It shows you how we can take the data out of Kepware, model it up and, and send it out to, uh, to a mosquito broker. So just reach out to me and we can schedule that. All right, fabulous. So that's gonna wrap up the questions. Thanks everybody for joining. I'm gonna pass it back over to Kyle. Awesome, yeah, thank you all again. Thanks for joining. Uh, the uh, slide deck and the recording will be sent out uh, as soon as we get the recording back from the powers that be at Zoom. Uh, and uh, yeah, again, thank you, John. I, again, I think this has been uh, been a lot of fun and looking forward Thanks, to uh, doing business in the future. Yeah, this was the first time that I've done kind of this back and forth podcast style uh, webinar. Um, had a good time, had fun with it. Thanks, Carolyn and the rest of the PTC team. And I look forward to uh, talking to any of the system integrators that are interested in in checking out more and more and learning more. So Excellent. thank you for your time. Excellent. All right. Thanks everyone. We'll see you next time. We'll talk to you later. Ready.